Good morning, I've just took the opportunity to have a sit down. It's been a busy morning at uh, BTME and I'm now with uh, a good old friend of mine, Colin Mumford from Bayer. Good morning, Colin. Morning, Lawrence. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Is it going all right? Uh, yes, we're, we're very busy. I mean, it's only day one. It's the, well, it's the first morning of day one and uh, yeah, we're surprised at how busy we are actually. Yeah, okay. And what have you got in like, what have you got for the, the punters who come and understand? You've got a Talking shop. Uh, there's two main things that we're really promoting t today or at BTME. Uh, the first is that Iprodion has now lost its uh, authorization, will be removed from the industry. So uh, for Bayer, that means Chipco Green, an interface. Uh, you can only buy it until uh, the 5th of March this year. And then the 5th of June is the last date that you can use any Iprodion containing product. So we're just reiterating that, letting, raising the awareness that Iprodion is going. What that means is we're losing a chemical group, so turf managers are going to lose uh, dicarboxamide, um, which means that you've got, they'll have fewer chemical groups to rotate for a resistance management point of view. Uh, the second thing that we're really pushing today, uh, in light of that, because uh, Iprodyne, Chipco Green, is a sort of a, a, a contact late curative product. It, it will control all stages of the disease development uh, for Fusarium, or Microdocin patch. Um, the newer chemistry that's coming to the fore now um, is more preventative stroke early curative and so we're, we're really pushing the message that turf managers need to sort of change their mindset rather than see if a disease comes in, look at it, wait and see if it gets bad and then apply. Really you want to be applying a product before you get that disease coming. So monitoring the environmental conditions, uh, seeing what conditions are suitable for the growth of the disease and then making a preventative application prior to the onset of the disease or if you see, see the disease the very first signs of it uh, treat it then because the new fungicides that are coming through will only be a preventative stroke early curative product so those late curative products in the future will be a, a thing of the past okay. right so uh, you've got an educational uh, talk on the stand this afternoon? Uh, yes, so we're, we're doing uh, two talks uh, every day, uh, really again reiterating that Iprodion has lost its authorization and what turf managers need to do uh, post the loss of, of that product or that, that active ingredient. Okay. And uh, we're, we're doing those today. Uh, earlier this morning I gave a talk in the uh, Continue to Learn seminars, uh, it was very well attended and uh, that again was about how fungicide management in the future will be, uh, it, it's based on assumptions, the assumptions are based on the knowledge that we have to date, so regulatory requirements may change in the future, but uh, we, we gave a talk on what the future likes with the knowledge that we have today. And is this disease pressure uh, increasing, is there more of it in, in recent years or is it stabilising? Yeah, so certainly over the last few years we've seen disease pressure has become more problematic uh, because we've got the milder, wetter winters. So it's creating conditions that are perfect for microdocium patch to, to germinate uh, and then to proliferate on sports turf. So if that is a trend with the milder, wetter winters, then certainly yes, disease pressure will be, be higher uh, in, in years to come. But then next year we might have uh, hard, heavy frosts from the 1st of September and it, and it won't be a problem. So it's very much what we're saying to, to turf managers is that they need to monitor the weather as part of their overall maintenance uh, strategy. Um, measure, record, analyse, not just the weather, loads of other factors, uh, and use that information to inform their management decisions going forward. And obviously in line with uh, cultural, good cultural practices. Yes, yeah, so an integrated approach. So using cultural, biological, and then chemical. Chemicals should be like the, the last piece in the jigsaw. It, you should really be looking to do your cultural and your biological practices as best as, as is practical uh, and is possible for uh, a, a given facility. Well, thank you, Colin. Thank you for that information and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank, thank you. you very much.